Hello everyone. Normally I say good morning, but it is afternoon today. Um, I changed the time last minute because I have had a headache for a couple of days now. And so that is why um, my lights are not on as well. Uh, so, um, and it makes the glare on my glasses a lot worse with no light. But um, yeah, there's just going to be no light today. I um, have dosed myself out on Tylenol. So anyway, that's why there's no light. That's why we're um, later in the afternoon. But today we're going to be talking about... Um, the third eye chakra tools so not last week the week before we talked about um, the third eye what it is uh, what it's for if it's balanced unbalanced um, underactive overactive all that stuff train <laughs> uh, I have the train right behind me and the highway right in front of me so and um, where it's so hot and sticky and muggy right now um, you're going to hear the windows are open and the fans are on, so um, there'll be some background noise that I, I can't really control too much. Um, I did try to put on a little bit of soft music in the background to maybe balance that out, but we'll just have to go with what we got today. So, um, like I said, we're talking about the third eye chakra, which is right here, and the tools you can use if you uh, want to work on balancing your third eye chakra. Now, tools are not necessary. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. You, if you um, private message me or comment that like, I have no tools, I can't work on my third eye chakra. Um, that is definitely not true. Um, tools make the job easier, but they are not required. Um, I use the analogy, <laughs> it's a bad one, um, but you can dig a hole. You can dig a hole with just your hands um, and and dig a hole just fine. It's going to be a lot more work and it's going to take longer, um, but you'll get it done eventually. But if you got a shovel, it's going to go a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, so that's basically what this is as well. You don't need any tools. Um, you don't need to go spend any money. Um, you don't need to buy any of the things that I'm telling you about. If you want to buy them and you want some help, I can certainly help you. Some of the things I may have available, um, I did spend some time um, trying to get some of my stuff up on the page, um, which is Lady Fialte on Facebook. Um, on the page, um, if you go to the Shop Now button, um, I've started to load some of the stuff up there, um, but it does take a really long time to to put each thing up there so um but I am starting to get those loaded up there for you um but you can just ask me if I have something if you're looking for something if not I can help direct you um to some places if you're local I'm in you know Grofton New Hampshire if you're local there are four or five crystal shops around um I really like um Deep Earth Arts um Isaac and Josh are very nice friendly people I like to go there they're always helpful whenever I have any questions. Um, but there are a couple others around as well. Um, there's lots of different places online. Um, if you're going to be buying crystals online, um, just buyer beware that a lot of stuff is knockoffs and a lot of stuff is um, mined by, um, could possibly, I won't say a lot of stuff is, but some stuff could be possibly mined um, by making children do the mining. So. Um, I usually look for something that says it's ethically sourced or um, things like that. So I have a couple of pages um, that I like to order my stuff from that I'm, I'm pretty sure are, are good places to order stuff from. So again, if you have any questions on that, um, just put them in the comments or um, go ahead and send me a private message, whichever you prefer. So we're going to smudge just a teeny little bit. Sorry, I'm like dying of heat here. I'm trying not to melt in front of you. <laughs> um, so we're gonna smudge a little bit. One of the things we're gonna talk about um, are some herbs and oils. And I apologize, I totally spaced on grabbing some oils, but um, I did 
I grabbed everything last night so it would be all ready for this morning. Um, but then I woke up with a horrible headache and um, took two Tylenol and went back to bed. Um, I just got up a little while ago. It's one o'clock and I just got up a few minutes ago. I got up and had some coffee and an English muffin and took two more Tylenol and took a shower to come live for you guys. <laughs> um, and I totally forgot to grab um, the oils, but you know what a bottle of oil looks like. It's not anything <laughs> too, um, too much to see. So let me just put this here. But one of the things I did, um, I got a bunch of the herbs that I had last night out. Um, so we'll get our charcoal going in just a second. And when, so when we get to those, we can burn some of the herbs as well. I don't tend to put my sage out. Uh, I light it and just let it burn. And because um, I feel it goes out when it needs to go out. It burns as long as it needs to burn. I'm trying to light my Palo Santos now, and it has not wanted to light here for a while. Every time I've tried to light it in the last couple of weeks, it does not want to burn. Which is kind of a sign to me that it's like, you don't really need it. Like, I don't have a lot of energy, negative energy and stuff in the house. Um, so... I feel like a lot of times if it doesn't light, it's because it doesn't really need to be lit. So it doesn't want to light, so I'm going to just move on and leave it. So um, third eye chakra tools. Sorry. I'm going to try to stay focused as much as I can today. <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to go. Um, goddesses. Um, and I've got three goddesses um just happens to be that's what there was in the book um the book that i'm using for your videos for my sources is um ultimate guide to chakra so let me just go and show you real quick I, i'm sure i've shown you this before but um there's this chapter on each um there's a chapter on each chakra there's some of the stones that we're going to talk about. Um, the herbs. It's nice big pictures. Um, there's some of the oils. Nice big pictures, nice big writing. Um, and so um, this is what I've been using to talk about our chakras. And so um, if you're interested, you know, because I just give you kind of the clip note stuff. I can't, I can't give you everything that's in the book. I, I kind of pick and choose and go over the, the best things that I can, um, that I can think of to go over for you. So, um, if you want more information, this is a good book. Um, we talked about next year, um, going over, um, the different Claire scents. So I bought a book, but I can only find a book on the four clear sense um there are way more than four but i got that one so we could at least get started next year because sometimes it takes me a while to find um you know something that um i really want to use for information but anyway going back to the tools um if you want to work with the god goddesses that i have picked again you don't need to go out and buy statues um i have little statues that i like to work with um, but you don't need to go out and get statues um, my other card fell I like to work with Freya and so this is all I have it's just a little postcard and I don't know if that's Freya or not but it makes me think of Freya and so um, she's got the runes around her and the little skull on her headband and stuff so this is I, I just keep this here um, so again, you can go, um, you know, to Google and search and print out something on your computer. Um, the other thing is make it your screensaver on your phone. Um, I'm mean, screensaver on your computer, whatever to, you know, work with it. You don't need to necessarily go out 
and um, buy anything again with this. You can, you know, just Google um, one of the goddesses you want to work with, click on images, find an image, and set it as your wallpaper. And you can work with it that way, and it doesn't cost you anything. So there's lots of different ways you can use some of these tools without necessarily going and spending a bunch of money. But and I try to, you know, give you that um, insight if, if I think of it. <laughs> um, so the first goddess I have is Pythia. And um, she is a um, goddess of the third eye. So she, that's one of the things that she's known for is being the goddess of the third eye. Um, she's also known for um, ancient wisdom um, and um, intuition. So that's all a very big part of what I do um, is my intuition. Um, use my intuition for my oracle readings, um, for my pendulum readings. Um, things of that sort. It's very um, intuitive and if somebody asks me to explain it, um, I haven't really come up with a good way to explain it except for it's just something that I just know to be true and then I usually go to the pendulum and, and try to confirm if I'm on the right track. So that's why I use a lot of the pendulum um, is to confirm if I'm, if I'm on the right track and usually I am. Um, sometimes like I'm on the right track but I haven't quite like I'm on the right path, but I haven't quite got it yet. Um, so that's where I'll use my pendulum again to kind of um, narrow down what it, what it is I want to be working on. Sorry, I feel like I have to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so Pythia, and again, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. So it's P-Y-T-H-I-A. Um, Pythia is how um, I'm reading it. So I, I could be wrong but again goddess of ancient wisdom and intuition so very important for the third eye um, the next goddess um, you guys may recognize this name um, but not know that it was a goddess um, her name is Circe um, and that was um, the queen on Game of Thrones is Circe um, and she is the goddess of magic and she's also um, the goddess of light and shadow um, again, she's goddess of um, intuition as well. So that's um, all these are circling around. Most goddesses are not just the goddess of one thing. They're usually a goddess of three or four different things. Um, so, um, but Pythia and Circe were both goddesses connected with third eye and intuition. Um, so the other goddess that I pick is Hecate. And um, some people are kind of weird when you talk about Hecate because they, they know her as um, the goddess of the crossroads, the goddess of like the underworld, um, between life and death kind of area. So she's kind of more on the shadowy side of things, but she is also a goddess of, you know, transformation, new beginnings, and also intuition as well. So, um, you know, even uh, we always need uh, we always need dark to have light. There's got to be that balance in there, right? So, uh, and she's not evil. She's just doing her job. <laughs> you know, um, I kind of explain it like you know people um, you know see a wolf um, killing a bird. I don't know. This first thing came to mind. And they're like, oh my god, that's so horrible. And it's like, the wolf isn't good or bad. The wolf is just a wolf. And that's how they survive. That's what they do. Um, it's not that the wolf is evil. And, you know, most times out of not, a wolf is depicted in the stories as evil. And um, he, the wolves are not evil. The wolf is just a wolf. And they're doing what wolves do. Um, they hunt to eat. So, back to Hecate, you know, a lot of people think of her as, um, like, an evil kind of goddess, um, deity, and I, I don't see her that way. I see her as she's just, she's just doing the job she was given, um, and trying to do the best she can with it, you know, so, um, all three of those goddesses, um, I like to work in threes, it's just the way it is for me. 
Um, three is a very important number in numerology and in sacral geometry and hermetic principles and all kinds of stuff, but I won't get into all that today. That's um, different videos. So, but three is a very important number and it is for me. I do most things in threes, so um, it's just the way I work. Um, but those three goddesses are all connected to um, thresholds, um, doorways, and um, in between worlds, between worlds kinds of things. So, um, sorry, I don't know what's going on here with allergies. Probably what's causing my headache. Um, so, again, all things connected to um, intuition, third eye stuff. They're also known as healers, shamans, and um, I probably won't say this correctly, but I'll try my best. Curianders, curianderers, um, it's basically a fancy word for a type of healer. <laughs> but um, those are also things that the three goddesses may be known for, is, is healing um, shama, um, shamanic journeys, um, shamanism, and this um, curianderers, uh, which again is basically a fancy word for um, a type of healer. Um, they see all, they, um, they see, work, and gaze upon all. So again, there's those three I like to work with. See, work, and gaze upon all. Um, again, so that intuition, that all-knowing, um, all-seeing, um, let's see here. One of the things I did write down that I wanted you to know, sorry, the dog is in the background there moving. Um, one of the things I do want you to know is the goddesses, um, they see all, work all, gaze upon all, all knowing, um, all that stuff, but they don't necessarily share all that knowledge with us. Um, so um, they leave it to us, but a lot of times if we ask them for guidance, if we you know work with them, call them in, call their energy in, um, a lot of times they will be willing to um, give you some of that information. You're not going to get a download and get everything that they know. Um, but if you're looking for some information, when you call upon them, a lot of times they will share that information with you. But if you don't call upon them, um, they're not they're not going to come share that information willingly with you. So you have to kind of go seek it out. It's there for you. Um, you just have to basically, you know, let them know that that's something you're looking for and that you want to do that. Um, so those are the three goddesses, Pythia, Circe, and Hecate, if you wanted to work with any of those images. Um, I have a nice um, Hecate um, Mesa mat. Um, it is one of the things I put up on the shop for sale um, for $10, if that's anything anybody's interested in. I almost didn't list it. I almost kept it for myself because it's a really pretty picture. Um, but I have so many um, mats that I, I can only work with so many of them. So um, moving over to the major arcana um, and my lovely deck that I have. It's not your typical tarot reader deck. So um, if you prefer to work with those, that's fine. It's just going to look very different than my deck. Um, so... Um, and even with no light, there's, I just realized there's a little, little J there in the corner. There's a B over here. All right. Um, it's the High Priestess. Sorry, distracting myself with my own cards. <laughs> the High Priestess. I'm trying to get it where you guys can kind of see it without a glare. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, so the High Priestess. Um, again, she's about balance and justice, which is your B and your J there. And, um, but she's also about, um, advanced learning. She's about visions. Um, she's about past, present, and future. So that's where that energy kind of ties into, um, the third eye. So it's, it's, you know, you can certainly use the balance and the justice in your third eye um, work because you want balance there. But um, she's, like I said, she's also very much about uh, advanced learning and visions. 
So um, your visions, again, kind of ties into that um, intuition and um, your third eye that way. And I love this deck. The pictures are so pretty. And because uh, I really don't care for the old fashioned tarot, um, tarot deck, but you know, if you do, that's perfectly fine. Um, you don't have to like the same things I like. World would be boring if we all like the same thing. Um, sorry, I just got really blurry here. So, moving on, hopefully, the camera will straighten out here in a second. It doesn't like it if I make fast, sudden movements. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on to the rune for your um, third eye. I keep wanting to say throat chakra, sorry. So if I do, um, I don't mean to, it's third eye chakra. I'm trying to be very aware of what I'm saying, um, but my headache is kind of kicking my butt here. Um, so... The rune is, um, and again, I'm just kind of guessing on pronunciations because nobody has um, actually taught me how to say these, but um, I'm going with Laguz. It's L-A-G-U-Z, Laguz. Um, it's, a ruse, um, ruse. it's a rune of psychic and the unseen. Um, so Laguz um, translates to lake. And um, so a body of water would be something that you would um, possibly scry with. Um, I think at some point I'm going to do, I've done a video on pendulums, um, but I haven't really done a video on different ways to scry. Um, so I might do that at some point for you guys as well. But um, a lake is a body of water. It's something you would scry in. Um, and you would do this again for that intuition in your third eye. Um, it's a rune of understanding, and um, a rune of truth will reveal itself. So again, very much connected to that um, intuition, insight kind of thing. So if you wanted to work with the rune, it's um, Laguz, is, I'm guessing. All right, so moving on to the planet. Um, the planet for your third eye chakra is not really a planet. It's the moon. Um, and I'm not all sciencey, so um, but I don't believe moons are considered planets, but I could be wrong. I have no idea. Um, but I don't consider the moon a planet. <laughs> anyway, um, the moon is all about um, intuition. Um, the moon is all about phases. There's actually eight phases that the moon goes through. Um, and uh, it's all about wisdom. The moon also controls the water. That's what causes our um, waves, our high tide and low tide. And again, that, that water is connected back to um, that scrying, that intuition, um, there's like lots of stories as to why water is connected that way. And again, I'm not going to go quite into all of that today. Um, but that's another rabbit hole. If you want to go down, you certainly can. Um, but water and the moon and intuition are very much all connected. Um, so the new moon is all about um, wisdom and um, new beginnings. And the full moon is all about um, gratitude and blessing. There is, like I said, eight phases in between. I'm actually wearing my tattoo right now. I hate this camera. I never know which way to go with anything. Um, it's kind of rubbing off. You can see some of the moons are like not really all there. But um, the, the tattoo has seven because the eighth phase is the new moon, which is no moon. So you can't really put a tattoo of no moon <laughs> on there. Um, but again, it's all about um, wisdom and new beginnings and blessings and intuition and all of that. So um, if you wanted to work with the moon, um, the moon is something I work with on a regular basis all the time. Um, so it's not um, something that I work with just when I'm trying to work with my third eye. 
um, well, I suppose that's not really true because I kind of work on my third eye all the time um, because um, what I work on all the time is my intuition. So um, I guess in a way that is what I'm working with my um, third eye chakra. All right, moving over to gemstones. Um, the first one I have is azurite. Um, it is um, a stone of psychic visions, and it's actually the one I wear all the time. This never comes off. Won't come off until the chain breaks, and then I have backup chains that I will be putting it on when that happens. Um, it's not polished. It's tumbled, but it's not polished, so it's not super shiny. Um, but I wear Azurite everywhere. Um, let's see here if I can show you a little chunk of it. So here it's a little more sparkly for you. This is Azurite. Um, this piece here as well. So azurite is um, for psychic visions. So it's um, a stone that I work with um, all the time on a regular basis. It's, it's always, always on. Um, if you ever see me with it off, I probably don't realize I've lost it. And, and if you tell me, I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> um, blue adventuring. Um, I don't think I have a piece of blue adventuring. But... Uh, Blue Adventuring, again, is going to heighten your intuition, so it's a very good one to work with. Um, tanzanite. My tanzanite is right here on my bracelet. Again, goes with me everywhere. Um, but I do have a, some littler pieces as well if I want to um, work with it that way. If I want to hold it, or sometimes I just... A lot of times I'll just pick up a stone and I don't even really know why and I'll just sit here if I'm watching TV or playing on Facebook or whatever and you know I just tend to do this with it kind of like my own little fidget spinner here going so tanzanite um, is um, teaching of other dimensions so it's helping you um, see through the veil um, work on the other side of the veil other side of dimensions um, things of that sort. Um, so again, it's going to help um, with the connection of people on the on the other side. My interpretation of it, anyway. Somebody else's might be a little different. Uh, next, we have um, Labradorite. It's one of my favorites, again. But pretty much all the blue ones are my favorites. <laughs> um, so it's a stone of new possibilities. It's also known as the stone... Um, of the Sagittarius, which is my sign. I am Sagittarius. Um, and it's very, very pretty. Um, it's got very um, rainbowy, but um, this piece doesn't have a ton of blue in it unless you get it turned just right, which the camera is probably not going to pick up, um, picking up more of the gold. But there is definitely blue in there if you turn it just right. Yeah, it's not really picking it up. Um, some of them are more purpley than blue. And this one is just picking up the gold right now. So right here it looks black. <laughs> and then right there it's gold. And somewhere in between there is kind of a blue purpley color. But this is a nice piece. Um, it's a good piece to um, just hold. I like to hold it. And um, again, new possibilities, um, Sagittarius, um, which Sagittarius sign is all about seeking wisdom, seeking the truth, um, seeking answers. Um, so again, this would tie back in, in that kind of way to um, the third eye. Next, we have Lapis Lazuli. People say that different. Um, some say Lazulu. Um, I don't know. To me, it's Lazuli, but I'm probably saying it wrong, but that's the way I've heard it said, so that's the way I say it. <laughs> um, and again, it's a blue stone. 
all my stones that are my favorites are pretty much the blue ones. Um, and lapis is for um, victory, but it's also, again, for intuition. So all of these are good for your intuition. I mean, if you're laying down and you set that right on your third eye and lay down with that on there, that would be nice. Um, you could do that with this piece as well. You could just kind of place that on there if you're laying down. Uh, the next one I have is sodalite. And again, one of my favorites, not a big surprise. Um, my other necklace that I have on here is sodalite. Um, <laughs> my little rope necklace is about to break. It's pretty much frayed on one side. Probably can't pick it up in the camera, but right here it's pretty frayed and it's probably going to snap anytime, but I have backup cords as well because as soon as that comes off, it's going to get a new cord and go right back on. But I also do have lots of pieces of it as well. Um, I just got a really big, nice pyramid. Um, I should have brought it over to show you. It's a really, really a good size pyramid. It's very, very pretty. Um, but I have it in lots of different... There's a little like cylinder cone of sodalite. Again, you could put that right on your third eye if you were sitting. I mean, you can hold it there, but that's not very relaxing or meditative. But um, if you were laying down, you could hold that on, put that on there. Um, so, sodalite um, is mostly known as um, a dream catcher stone, um, and it's to release fear. But one of the reasons it's good for your third eye is because it's also really good for focusing. So if you're trying to um, use your intuition uh, or whatever your um, third eye, you know, what you're trying to work on, um, it's really good for focus. So that's a good reason to use that. So, um, And I have like little pieces. I have a little piece here. And just real quick, I, you know, I have a lot of blue. I have um, blue kyanite. Um, these pieces I really like. Um, these are um, teal, teal kyanites. But yeah, this is a little tray. It just has all kinds of little stones on it, and you'll see there's quite a bit of blue in there. It's a, it's a tea a little tea mug the teacup got broken and um, but it was my grams so ancient ancient wisdom in there <laughs> so i'm going to just set that aside so we've talked about the goddesses we've talked about the major arcana the rune the planet and the gemstones so now we're going to go over and jump into the herbs and oils again i didn't grab the oils i have but, um, you know, you guys have all seen what an oil bottle looks like, so I don't think it'd be anything too much by not showing you the bottles. Um, I'm just dumping out my little charcoal bowl here. Look at It's awful dirty. Probably needs a good clean. And, oh, I have one charcoal disc left here. Good thing. It's really hot in here. I don't know if you can see it, but my cheeks are getting... A little red. I don't um I don't mind the heat. It's the muggy sticky that I have a hard time with. Um and the headache really is probably my own fault because even on a good day, you can see that sparking, so that's how you know it's lit. Um actually I think it just went out. Um even on a good day, I am not good about staying hydrated. And then when we have days like this, and it's hot and sticky and muggy, and I don't stay hydrated, I end up with headaches. So, um, I did bring myself a glass of water, but I'm not good about drinking. I can go all day with without drinking anything and it doesn't really bother me as far as being thirsty most of the time but that you get dehydrated then you get headaches oh that's the dog looking at <laughs> um 
All right, so moving over to um, herbs. Um, I have one here that I put away, but I think I want to grab it back out for you. Oh, right here. So one of the the first ones I had was Eyebright. Um, I do have it in this really fine powder form. And you can't really tell much, but it's in there because it's like the same color as the package. Eyebright in there. Um, and see the first thing I wrote on it is opens third eye. But I bought some at Deep Earth Arts and in the doo -doo -doo, in more of the herb form so you can see it. So where's my little spoon? My little herb spoon. Bought it off Pamper Chef. I don't really know what it's supposed to be for, but probably like a dip or jam or I don't know, spoon, but <laughs> I like to use it for my herbs because it's just a good, easy way. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on my charcoal disc. It smells really good. And this is for enhancing visions. So if you're trying to do some sort of vision work, journey work, shamanic journey, anything like that, um, eyebright would be really good so um, you can use it like just in this form or the powder form and burn it um, you can um, also get incense you know I have more incense than I'll probably ever burn in a lifetime but I keep buying more because I never have enough apparently <laughs> so that is eye bright and again that is for enhancing visions Um, the next one I have is Juniper, and um, Juniper is known for basically um, protecting you from energy, um, but you'll see here, connect with spirit. So that's all the things it's good for, new beginnings, dream, connect with spirit, safety, wealth, abundance, cleanses your aura, are all things that it's good for. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Maybe I can. I'm actually just going to take out one because this is a berry. Um, you can get this again in powder form and things like that, other forms, but um, I do have it in the juniper berry. So I'm just going to drop the berry there on the charcoal disc, which I think may have gone out. Challenging me today. Nothing wants to burn. I'm trying to light the charcoal disc here, bear with me. Doesn't want to. So sorry. This is the joys of doing things live. Is Sometimes not everything works the way you want it to. I don't know. Maybe typically the charcoals will still burn, but maybe I didn't have it in the package, so maybe it's got some moisture on it from all the humidity. I don't know. But it is definitely not burning. Oh, heavens. All right, me, nope. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it is totally not going. It just started to pop and snap, but then it stopped again. Catch myself on fire here. And my lighter is not doing well. Back up 
later. Okay, apparently nothing wants to light today. That blended on my hand, yes. Some point here, I'm gonna burn myself. just does not want to light at all. It's popping like it wants to, but... Well, isn't this exciting to sit here and watch me hold a lighter on a piece of charcoal? Alright, so I guess it's not going. Oh, maybe I got some smoke. We'll see. I don't know. Moving on. What are you do? Um, the next one I have is Mugwort. And Mugwort is, um, as you can see, my package is almost gone. <laughs> um, because I use it... Come on, computer. Come on. Um, I use it quite a bit. Um, I, use, I use Mugwort quite often. And... Um, it's really good for meditating. So again, yeah, um, that connecting um, journey, space, um, visions, all of that. So what I wrote on the back is um, it calms you. So when you're trying to journey, being calm is, is very important um, work. Um, very important in the work is to be very calm and relaxed and um, open to receive. So if you're trying to meditate and you're like all anxious and stressed out and a million things on your mind, um, your journey, your meditation, um, your vision isn't going to um, go as well as it could. Um, so again, it's really good for calming your nerves, which then in, is good for your visions. Um, it's also good for divination. And um, I wrote menopause, a depression, um, and anxiety again. So being calming again is going to help with that anxiety so it's kind of like two sides of the um, same stone um, but you'll see like mine is almost gone there's like almost none left in there I use it a lot so I'll have to get some more and so um, it's kind of a weird looking I'm trying to turn it around so you could see it this way but uh, oh the stupid camera Everything's backwards and it drives me bonkers. All right, so we got a little mugwort on there. And again, it's really good for um, meditating. Oh, there it goes. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming through. <laughs> it's very fine, but it's there. Um, and I love the smell of mugwort. Um, so mugwort is a really good one for uh, that meditating in the third eye. Moving on to the next one um, I don't have in um, oil or herb, um, but is poppy. And um, obviously you guys all should probably, I think, know about the poppy seed and opium. <laughs> and um, it's very well known for calming your mind. Um, so I'm not telling you to go out and do um, opium or anything like that. But working with poppy um, can um, help, again, calm your mind, quiet you down, um, just like the mugwort can. Um, I don't know what poppy smells like. I've never worked with it. Um, I'm very, um, like I said, I'm very um, sided to the mugwort. I love to work with the mugwort. Um, it's something I use quite a bit. So... Um, I haven't really gone to use poppy. Um, another one um, is mandrake root, and I don't have any of that either. Um, that's known for enhancing your intuition. And again, I don't have that in herb or oil. Blue lotus, I do have that in essential oil, but again, I forgot to bring it out. Um, 
And again, that's going to be about softening you, um, relaxing you, um, calming you um, for um, working with your third eye. I'm just a mess today. Um, the next one is Cypress. I do have that in essential oil. Um, I like Cypress. I use it a lot. Um, I use it in a, quite a few of my medicinal um, oil blends as well. Um, and again, that's for wisdom and intuition. Um, the next one I have is Opopanex, which is a resin. Um, sometimes you find it in a powder form because they'll take the resin and just crush it down. Um, but I do have it in the little resin form. And again, op Opopanex is um, very much about um, the, the meditative, clearing, calming, relaxing. Um, but it's very good for clearing your energy. And um, all my pieces in here are, I'll show you, like they come in chunks. Um, and, and a lot of times I break these because that's like a lot of a Popinex too, <laughs> to burn. Um, especially because I usually burn it with other things. Um, I don't typically burn it just alone. So like this little piece is a good size and I'm just going to drop that. Um, oops, and I totally missed. Use my little spoon here because the charcoal is going up and it missed again. Yeah. So you're probably going to start to see some smoke. My juniper berry is burning and um, the eyebright is burning. The mugwort is just starting. And then the apopanax is going to um, start as well. The thing with the apopanax is um, a lot of times the resin. Well, well, it doesn't really burn. It kind of melts and gets gooey. And a lot of times I have to go and kind of move it, move it around um, on the charcoal. Um, so that's one of the things about the Apopanex that I don't really care for. Um, is it doesn't really burn. It just kind of melts because it's a resin. But it does smell really well. Smell really well. It smells really good. My English ain't so good today. Um, the other one I have written is betel leaf. Um, it's often used in ceremony. Um, so again, if you're doing um, a lot of ceremony work where you're going to be doing some journeying and things, betel leaf might be something you want to work with. And again, it's tied to that um, intuition. Again, it's not anything that I have. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, um, I didn't write it down on here, but I felt like it was one that um, I wanted to talk about because people really just don't know about it, um, is buchu leaf. Now, buchu leaf on the back here, I've got, it's for healing, it's for anti-inflammatory, um, it's antibacterial, it's protective, it's to ward off evil. Um, but what a lot of people don't know is it's kind of, got the same effect as um, marijuana, just not as potent. And um, I mean, the chemical buildup is not the same or whatever, but um, it kind of has that same um, effect as marijuana. So I don't smoke it. You can smoke it. You can get a pipe and smoke it. Um, you can, and, and it's legal. Um, you can um, drink it in a tea. Some people do drink it in a tea if they wanted to do a little bit of um, journey or if they really just are um, want to relax. Um, they will make a buchu tea. Um, but um, again, typically I, I burn it. So I'm just going to take a little pinch here and put that on my charcoal disc. Now, that's, I'm not going to necessarily get high from it, um, but um, a lot of people who use um, marijuana as a, um, like, because they have anxiety or stress um, and they use it as, to kind of calm them, um, which always seemed weird for me because you're calming and, but they're saying you're getting high. Um, but anyway, um, Buchu leaf is, is good for that as well. It's just going to kind of bring you that calm down a level, um, kind of. So I wouldn't necessarily say you're going to get high from it. 
um, you may get, you know, a little buzzy feeling, but um, Pooch Relief, again, if you want to know more about it, um, Google. <laughs> all right, so that was all I have for herbs. And then the last thing to talk about, we've got about 10 minutes left, so um, did pretty good. A lot of times I go over. Um, just because today I don't have to rush off and go to work, I'm on time. <laughs> Isn't that the way it usually goes? Um, so the last one I have to talk about is the archetype. Um, and the archetype that I picked, um, I only did pick one. And um, the book only picked one. And my kind of was like, I was like, maybe I should do some research and pick some other ones and stuff. But then I was like, nope, you know what? The, just the one feels... feels good to me, feels right to me, and so that's what I go with. Um, it's the Oracle. Now, um, there are lots of movies about oracles. Um, there are probably a million different stories out there about oracles. Um, you know, there was an oracle in the Matrix, <laughs> um, and they're all depicted very, very differently, um, but the basic idea of the oracle is basically that they know all and again that kind of goes back to the three goddesses that we were talking about Pythia and Circe and Hecate they kind of see all work all gaze upon all um, just like the Oracle um, the Oracle channels wisdom um, she has the the power of prophecy so she can see the future and um, again I wrote sees all knows all and embodies all so again, very similar to the goddesses that um, we talked about earlier. So the oracle um, is something you can work with. The oracle is a little tricky because if you Google um, the oracle, you're going to get like a pretty wide range of different images. Um, <laughs> and one of them is the little old lady cooking, making cookies in the matrix was the oracle. Um, so. You know, um, as far as that goes, if that's what you're going to, if you're going to Google the Oracle and, and then click on images, just work with one that resonates with you. Don't, don't overthink it. Don't be like, I don't know, should it be this one? Should it this be? I don't know if this one's the right one. If the little old lady cooking, making cookies from the movie Matrix resonates with you, and that's what you think of when you think of Oracle, and um, then work with that image you know um it's not so much tied into the image i don't think as to um what the image brings for you so again if when you say the word the oracle if that's who you think of which is a lot of times what i think of is that little old lady making cookies in the matrix um then you know certainly work with that because that's when you see that image that's automatically what I think of is the oracle, the all, seeing all, knowing all, working with all, embodying all, wisdom, prophecy, seeing the future, like all of those things. Um, so, you know, even though that it sounds kind of silly, if that's what resonates with you, then go ahead and work with that. So, I got a mess here. I just took a shower like right before I came live. So my hair is like still partially wet. And it's drying in this humidity and I'm getting frizzy. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, you don't need any of these tools. Um, you don't have to work with any of these tools. Um, you can certainly work on your third eye chakra, uh, your intuition, um, your connection, uh, all those things, all on your own. Um, the tools are just going to be here to make it a little bit easier for you. Just like I said, you can go outside and dig a hole with nothing but yourself your bare hands you can go out and dig a hole um you're probably going to break a few nails and maybe cry and get dirty um but you can do it um but if you go out with a shovel you can still do it now even with a shovel you might get some blisters and still might get a little dirty and there still might be some crying because i'm a wimp when it comes to that stuff i don't like getting dirty or breaking a nail <laughs> um but it's easier than if I did it with my hands. So, um, 
you know it all depends on you and how you want to do it and what you want to work with and you can work with all three goddesses you can work with just one of the goddesses um same with the herbs you can work with all of them like i just put um you know four or five different ones on my charcoal disc that are going to burn now for an hour or so and um they're going to um, the smell and the smoke is going to um, fill up the space for me. Um, but you could make a, a perfume blend and, and anoint with it, you know. Anointing right on your third eye would be really great with it. Um, like, you can be really creative. Like, even if I wanted, um, I don't, um, but if you so wanted, if you were called to it, when my charcoal is done, I could take that ash and rub it on um, my third eye a lot of people will do that rub ashes on their third eye um, not to go off on a tangent but um, on the Christians on Ash Wednesday put ashes on their third eye <laughs> I'll leave that there <laughs> um, so you can do that if you're called to um, but you can certainly make a perfume an anointing blend and work with that um, the, some of those, again, you can, um, you know, work with them as teas if you so feel so called to, um, you know, uh, just always kind of be a little cautious of what you're ingesting. Um, I, not to say that any of these are poisonous, but um, they could make you nauseous, or, and I don't know what they're going to taste like, but um, I do know people um, that have made um, buchu tea and drank it and they're like it doesn't taste the greatest but you you know you can put a little honey in it and um you know drink it because you're not really drinking it for the flavor um you're drinking it for um the the uses of it um again for the stones you know like i have so many of the blue stones but i don't have all of them i didn't have i don't have blue adventuring or at least i don't think i do I don't think I have any blue adventure in. I have blue calcite, um, and um, I have azurite, I have sodalite, I have lapis lazuli, I have um, tanzanite, azurite, and again, I typically have all the time my azurite and my sodalite necklaces on. Those pretty much never come off. If you see me without them, I've lost them, and I've I'm probably crying <laughs> but you can wear them as jewelry um, or you can have the stones and just hold them meditate with them um, like I said you can place them on your third eye if you want to lay down and do a meditation you know um, you could just light your herbs and get a stone and just lay down and just not really do a meditation or not really do um, a journey or anything, but just lay down and just try to quiet your mind and relax. That's nice, you know. I got some nice little meditative music going. I could just lay down on the floor. Um, and again, you can work with all of them or you can just work with one. Um, you know, I have three here, so I might put this one on my third eye and then put one of each of these in my hand. So, you know, whatever feels right to you, whatever you feel called to do, um, you know, people will send me questions, and um, nine out of ten times, their answer is in their question. They know the answer. They just really want somebody to tell them that they're right. Um, and usually, you know, I'm just like, go back and read your question because you, you've already answered your own question. And um, most of the time, they'll go back. They'll, I get a message back and go, oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> um but if you just need that little bit of help, um, certainly go ahead and ask me. I'm not telling you not to ask me questions because you know the answer. That's not what I'm saying. But a lot of times, you know, um, people kind of know the answer already. They just really want somebody to let them know that um, their answer is right or okay or safe. Or um, people get caught up on, is that the right thing? Like, is that the right stone? Um, and it's like, if that's what your intuition is telling you to use, even if it's not on my list here of blue stones, if your intuition is telling you, um, like, to say to work with the blue, 
blue calcite. I just happen to be able to reach it. If your um, intuition is telling you to work with blue calcite, go ahead and work with blue calcite. If your intuition is, you know, I have tons, tons of blue stones around. More stones than I know. This is aquamarine, sorry. Um, you know, I have lots of blue stones around. So even though it wasn't necessarily on my list of blue stones, um, if that's what your intuition is telling you to work with, then um, go ahead and, and work with it. There's a reason your own intuition, higher good, um, source, whatever you want to call it, is, is putting that thought there for you to work with. Um, I got a blue lace agate ring I wear all the time. So again, more blue. Um, so if your intuition is telling you to work with that for some reason, then then we need to learn to trust that. But a lot of times we second guess ourselves. We're like, yeah, I don't know. Is that the right stone? Is it the st stone I'm supposed to be working with? It's not the stone Julie said. She didn't say that on our list. Um, <laughs> but if that's what your intuition is telling you, then um, that's probably what you should be working on. All right. So, excuse me, sorry. I am um, going to... I don't know what I'm going to go do now. It's up 2 o'clock. My husband won't be home for like another three hours. And um, I don't feel like doing much of anything. I still have a splitting headache. It's right here. Like right in my eyebrows. Um, so I don't think I'll be doing anything too much. But I have some little projects I can work on. So I will see you guys all on Monday. Um, Monday we are doing our weekly forecast as usual at 7.30 so we go over any kind of um, astrological stuff, lunar stuff, holiday stuff, um, eclipse stuff, retrograde stuff, um, anything that's going to be affecting the energies um, that you um, may want to be aware of throughout the week. Um, it helps me a lot plan my week out. Um, my book here. Sorry, I just gotta move some stuff. I have my book here. This is where I put my notes. And each day tells me when I go through, each day tells me what it's going to be like. And so, um, you know, like I said, if I have a project that I need to finish up, by knowing these, I know which day is the best day to plan on doing projects. I know which day is the best day to not plan on doing projects. Um, you know, I know if I have to have a conversation with my boss, I can pick from knowing this from the energies, which day might be a good day to go talk to my boss and which day might not be a good day to go talk to my boss. Um, so like this week, um, Saturday is all about communication. Um, I don't work on Saturday, but, um, you know, if you're planning out your week and you're, um, so say you got to have a conversation with a partner or a friend or a loved one, um, and um, so you, you can go through here and go, okay, it's going to be kind of a tough conversation, and Saturday is all about communication and um, compromise, so that's going to be a good day to have that conversation, so then I can call that friend or loved one or whatever and say, you know, can we get together for Saturday for lunch? It's just a really good way to help plan out your week and knowing when things might be um, to your benefit to do that. So we do that every Monday morning at 7.30. And um, <laughs> there's all my notes. So, and I do this every week. And I tell you which stones you might want to work with. Um, a color you might want to work with for the day, um, all kinds of good stuff in there. So um, I'll see you guys all on Monday. I hope you have a really good weekend. Um, here where I am in New Hampshire, it's supposed to be sunny and mid 80s, um, which is like a really nice temperature. Hopefully I didn't check what it was going to be for being muggy or not, but um going to probably be a weekend of riding on the motorcycle, which I'm really okay with that as long as my headache goes away. So, 
Um, hope everybody has a really good weekend. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, I love you guys. And remember, as always, to be kind. Um, your kindness is not only going to make your day better, which to me, that's like in itself is a good enough reason. Like I'm going to do something kind for someone and I'm going to feel good about it and I'm going to have a nice, good, happy day. Alexis is doing something. I don't know what she's doing. Um, Alexa, not Alexis. That's a different person. Um, it's going to make me feel good about myself and make me, you know, have a nice, good feeling throughout the day. That's really, you know, a good reason to do something kind. Um, but on top of that, it's going to make that other person that you, you've shown some sort of kindness to, to have that same sort of experience, that same sort of feeling through the rest of the day um, of, you know, um, oh, somebody did something really nice for me. There's still good people out there. Um and then in turn, that person may do something nice for someone else and you see where I'm going with that. So um, it really could potentially change some lives. So like I say, be kind. It could change your day, could change someone else's day, could potentially change somebody else's life. So thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. See you guys all on Monday morning at 730. Lots of love.